in 1947 that he'd become famous as one of the inventors of a tiny electronic device known as a transistor. It's a transistor, no bigger than a kernel of corn. showed up in my lab at MIT one day. I thought, my God, I've never met anybody that was brilliant. I changed my whole career plans and said, I'll, I want to go to California and work with this man. The whole atmosphere changed very quickly and, uh, and deteriorated very rapidly. Shockley's ego, outsized to begin with, now threatened to eclipse his genius. He became rigid, authoritarian, impossible to please. They knew how good they were, and Shockley was treating them as if they were children. Shockley Laboratory was about to suffer an exodus of talent from which it would never recover. You're better off to go out and start your own company and fail than it is to stick at one company for 30 years. The real respect comes from going out there and being an entrepreneur. But that wasn't true in the 1950s. The cost of failure now is small. The cost of failure back then was enormous. Must have been scary as hell. The history of Silicon Valley is people going to startups, leaving really nice jobs that pay really well, and taking this gigantic leap to see if they can uh, make something important happen, be valuable, and in the long run, maybe even get rich. The noise is the prototype of that. The noises of the world didn't get into this to have a job. They got into this to create a reality and to be in control of that reality, even if it meant giving everything up and starting from scratch. 